What makes a serial killer tick? Well, tonight, the NBC10 investigators take a look into the disturbing writings of Guy Muldaven, the man suspected in the Lady of the Dunes murder in Provincetown 49 years ago to this very day. Our Kathy Kern is working with the renowned FBI profiler digging into Muldaven's mind as he is being eyed in this case and others. It was a disturbing scene in the Race Point Dunes on this day back in 1974. A woman was murdered. Her identity was unknown until last year. And that identity led investigators on the trail of her husband, Guy Muldaven. An important thing to killers is the moment when they can see that the life is going out of somebody's eyes. This really does remind me of that. A retired FBI profiler deciphering the bizarre words and drawings penned by Guy Muldaven, the man now being eyed as the killer in the Lady of the Dunes case in Provincetown and two other murders in Seattle decades after the crimes. I'm Julia Cowley. I'm a retired FBI agent and profiler. My biggest case was the Golden State Killer. Julia Cowley, who has analyzed some of the most horrific cases involving serial killers in the country, working with the NBC10 investigators, sharing her expertise in the murder of Ruth Marie Terry. There's no one set profile of a serial killer. Ruth was the victim of a gruesome crime in the dunes of the Cape on July 26, 19. 1974. Her head was crushed and nearly decapitated. Her hands cut off and teeth were pulled. She was only known as the Lady of the Dunes for 48 years until genetic genealogy identified her last fall and put investigators on the trail of her now deceased husband, Guy Muldaven. Once you identify her and you can start putting her life back together, and once they started doing that, that led right to her husband. Muldaven had this twisted book, Cooking with Rump Oil, published two years after Ruth's murder. Kali says one of his so-called recipes, titled Cape Cod Shid, has eerie similarities to the crime. The way he's drawn the hair here, and I know she had you know, flowing auburn hair. What I do wonder, especially the last, the tender look will become one of despair. You have to think that perhaps that was the moment he watched the last life go out of her eyes when she realized he's going to kill me. And it's horrifying. The alleged murderer was known as a charismatic former antiques dealer who also made headlines in the 60s in Seattle, where he was a suspect in the brutal killing and mutilation of his previous wife and stepdaughter. Newspaper reports at the time described the horror. Human remains found in a septic tank. Front page photos show Muldaven's arrest in New York after being on the run and refusing to give testimony related to the mutilation of human remains. Writing this book sort of indicates to me the dismembering was an important aspect to him. It's a little bit creepy and morbid when you go through it and you kind of see what's happening and they're being boiled and filleted and grinded up. I think possibly this was his way of reliving what he had done. In the book's introduction, he writes about deciding which quote-unquote beasts were to be sacrificed. When somebody no longer suits this purpose in his life, he's going to figure out how to change that. That might include, well, I'm done with you. I'm going to kill you. I've wanted to look at this book so, so bad. For Ruth Terry's son, the book is a haunting and heartbreaking reminder of what was lost on that fateful day. The tender look will become one of despair. This is what really bothers me is this picture, because she had long, beautiful hair. It's almost like she's looking back at him. The fact that he touched my ma kills me, but the fact that he got away with it pisses me off more than anything. In a way, he wanted attention, but he also probably is enjoying the fact that nobody really knows his secret. It was a secret buried for almost five decades, now brought to light with hints of what may have happened at the hands of Guy Muldaven, memorialized by the killer himself in this book. It's too bad Guy Muldaven didn't have 
the FBI knocking on his door. But there's plenty of other killers out there that it's just a matter of time before, you know what, we finally found you. While David went on to remarry and live in California until he died and was cremated in 2002, now investigators are looking to see if he's linked to any other unsolved murders. Kathy Curran, NBC 10 Investigators.